Good day, everyone. My name is Mr. Chisun. Today, we'll be looking at the humerus. We'll be looking at this bone here, which is the humerus. So, this is the way the humerus is placed in the body. So, the humerus is defined as a long bone that connects the shoulder region to the rest of the upper limb. It is a long bone. It is a long bone, actually. The type of bone that it is, is a long bone that connects the shoulder region to the rest of the upper limb. And the humerus is the longest bone in the upper limb. It is the longest bone in the upper limb. Then having seen that, the humerus connects the shoulder region to the rest of the upper limb at this joint here, which is known as the shoulder joint. So you can see the scapula and the head of the humerus forming a joint here, which is the shoulder joint. So we'll be looking at other fissures in the humerus. So the humerus is divided into three parts, the proximal part, the proximal part, the distal part, and the body. The proximal part, the distal part, and the body, or the shaft. So we'll be taking these parts one after the other, these three parts, we'll be taking it one after the other in order to see specific fissures that are in these parts. So we'll be looking at the different parts of the humerus and the specific fissures that can be seen in the humerus. This part of the humerus is known as the proximal part of the humerus. Why this is the body of the humerus and this part is known as the distal part of the humerus. Then we'll be looking at the fissures that can be seen in each of these parts of the humerus. Coming to the proximal part, this part that bulges out, that is protruded here, or the rounded part, is known as the head of the humerus. It is this head of the humerus that articulates with the glenoid fossa of the scapula to form the shoulder joint or the glenohumeral joint. So, this is the scapula and this is the glenoid cavity or the glenoid fossa of the scapula. Then this is the head of the humerus and look at how it articulates to form the shoulder joint. So that is it. So having seen the head of the humerus, let's look at another fissure. This depression here, this narrow depression around the head of the humerus is known as the anatomical neck of the humerus. However, we also have the surgical neck here. This part is known as the surgical neck. It is called the surgical neck because it is prone to fracture. So during accident or during a strong force, this part is prone to fracture and that is why it is called the surgical neck. And this depressed part is called the anatomical neck. Then having seen the anatomical and the surgical neck, Let's go over to the tuberosities. This protrusion here, or this big protruded part that is around here, is known as the greater tuberosity. Then this smaller one is known as the lesser tuberosity of the humerus. So the greater and the lesser tuberosities. In between the two tuberosities, there is a narrow groove or there is a narrow depression or gutter like depression that passes in between the both of them this is known as the intertubacular sulcus or the intertubacular groove this intertubacular sulcus gave passage to the tendon of the long head of the bicep brachii so the long head the tendon of the long head of the bicep brachii passed through this groove here then having seen that, let's come over to the body or the shaft of the humerus. We've been able to see the fissures in the proximal part of the humerus. Let's go over to the 
features in the body of the humerus. There is a protrusion here on the body of the humerus. You can see this protrusion here. This is known as the deltoid tuberosity. This deltoid tuberosity, it gave attachment to the deltoid muscle. So this is the deltoid tuberosity. Then just beside the deltoid tuberosity, there is a groove, a very shallow groove that runs beside it. It is known as the radial groove. This radial groove gave passage to the radial nerve. So the radial nerve passed through this groove this way. Then having seen these features in the body of the humerus, let's go over to the distal part of the humerus. So this is the distal part of the humerus. This is the medial part and this is the lateral part of the humerus. So there is a downward loop or downward ridge here on the medial part of the humerus. This downward ridge or slope is known as the medial supracondylar ridge. Why on the lateral side? The one on the lateral side is more prominent, as you can see. This is known as the lateral supracondylar ridge. Medial and the lateral supracondylar ridge. Then, this protrusion at the terminal end of the medial supracondylar ridge, this outward protrusion is known as the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Why the one on the lateral side is known as the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. Then having seen that, this rounded part here on the lateral side is known as the capitulum of the humerus. This is where the head of the radius articulates. And on top of the capitulum, there is a shallow fossa here on top. This shallow fossa is known as the radial fossa. So when you flex the elbow joint, the head of the radius come to lie here inside this fossa here which is the radial fossa and that is why it is called the radial fossa but when you extend it the head of the radius come back to be at the capitulum here this is the radius the radial bone and this is the head of the radius so this is the way it lie and when you flex the elbow the head of the radius finds its way inside this radial fossa and that is why it is called the radial fossa then on the medial part we have the trochlea of the humerus so this is known as the trochlea of the humerus why on top of the trochlea there is a shallow depression here this is known as the coronoid fossa it is called the coronoid fossa because the Coronoid process of the ulna when you flex the elbow come to lie here. And this is known as the trochlea of the humerus. So yeah. this is the ulna, ulna bone. So this is it. This is the orecranon process of the ulna. Finding its way here. And this is it. Then this is the coronoid process of the ulna. When you flex the elbow, the coronoid process enters into the coronoid fossa. You see how it enters into the coronoid fossa. And that is why here is called the coronoid fossa of the humerus. Then, just beside the trochlea, inferior to the media epicondyle, there is a shallow groove that runs there here this shallow groove is known as the ulna groove because the ulna nerve passed through the media epicondyle to run through this groove before going down to the forearm then having said that 
if you turn to the posterior aspect of the humerus, you see this big fossa here. This fossa is called the olecranon fossa because the olecranon process of the ulna finds its way here. When you extend the elbow, the olecranon process of the ulna finds its way here when you extend the elbow. And that is why it is called the olecranon fossa. So, let me do a recap of what I've said so far. I said that the humerus is divided into three parts. The proximal part, the body or the shaft, and the distal part. This is the head of the humerus. This is the anatomical neck of the humerus. This is the surgical neck of the humerus. The greater tuberosity, the lesser tuberosity, the intertubercular sulcus. Then coming to the body, we have the deltoid tuberosity. We have the radial groove. Then coming to the distal part, we have the lateral supracondylar ridge, the medial supracondylar ridge, the media epicondyle, the lateral epicondyle, the capitulum, the radial fossa, the trochlear, the coronoid fossa, and we have the ulnar groove here. So we've come to the end of this teaching. I'll encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn with Chisum Great. Follow me on TikTok and Facebook, Learn with Chisum Great. Like this video, share this video to your friends, and comment on this video. Thank you very much.